Welcome back to the National Defense. It's Randy Miller, and we're so excited about our next guest. Talk about a guy who's been there and back. Uh, Tom Spooner, former Special Forces and Warrior's Heart co-founder. His service to our nation in the U.S. Army spanned nearly 21 years, and he's now dedicated to healing his fellow warriors struggling with chemical dependencies, PTSD, and mild TBI. And Tom Spooner joins us here on the National Defense. Tom, how are you? I'm doing good, Randy, and uh, thank you for having me. Sound like a green beret. It's a green beret voice, isn't it? <laughs> that, that, it might be a little bit. <laughs> hey, before we get into what you're doing here, tell sure. us a little bit about your military background. Um, <clears throat> so my military background, the short version, uh, will go with uh, uh, from 90 to 95. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division as an infantryman. Uh, I was in the first school for, came right out of basic training, AIT, jump school, and then right to the Gulf. So that was a, a big, big change. And yeah. um, that, and that was my introduction into the military. And uh, so from 90 to 95, I was in the 82nd. Uh, from 96 to 2001, I was in uh, 7th Special Forces Group uh, as an 18 Charlie, which is explosive guy. And, uh, wow. Deployed to Central and South America pre-9-11, you know, on all kinds of training missions and everything. And then from September of 2001 until 2011, uh, I was out at Delta. Uh, ended up doing uh, 12 different deployments, uh, 40 total months time in combat, and then I retired in 2011. Wow. Well, hey, you know, thank you for your service doesn't doesn't even start to cover it. But we really appreciate everything that you've done, Tom. And we are just coming off a special date uh, right. this past week, World Suicide Prevention Day. And I know that uh, you know a lot about that, right? Yeah, I do. Yep, I uh, I do know a lot about that. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of low times in my life. Uh, you know, one of the things that drives what I do in Warrior's Heart is, uh, uh, and back even in my military career back in 90, I struggled with alcohol and, uh, at a young age. So uh, I got sober back in 92. So the majority of my military career uh, was very passionate about sobriety and helping others, you know. And um, so that was a big part of my story. So I saw some pretty low times even early on in life. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, all of my, my time in the military, um, the one thing that kept me alive was that I wasn't self-medicating, uh, right. you know, had a support group, have an incredible family, uh, you know, have a lot of really wonderful things in my life. Uh, however, uh, that didn't negate me from what the profession, you know, and what we were doing, uh, uh, occurs, you know, in, on the battlefield. Sure. And, uh, and in 2006, I, uh, uh, I was probably 20 meters from a really close mortar round that, uh, gave me a mild traumatic brain injury. Uh, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, you know, especially it was 2006 wasn't talked about much and hell, everybody was getting blown up. So we just kept on going, Right. but it was pretty significant. Um, and then, uh, and then along with all those deployments, uh, you know, I got a pretty significant amount of post-traumatic stress that was going on, which was all manageable for a good amount of time. And, you know, and, and some people manage well, uh, some people don't have any problems, you know, experiencing things, and that's all right. Uh, I had a little bit of problem, and uh, back to the suicide prevention and the importance of that is, is for me in 2010, uh, whenever I had untreated uh, post-traumatic stress going on and untreated traumatic brain injury going on, uh, I almost took my own life, and um, mm. and it wasn't for the reason of. Uh, like they would be better off or a lot of depression or anything. It was, uh, mainly cause my head wasn't thinking straight. Uh, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, that that was a valid course of action, uh, you know, to kind of shut the noise off that was going on in my head. Hey Tom, let's kind of explore that for just a second. Sure. So when you got to that low point mm -hmm. and you thought about taking your own life, did you have basically tunnel vision at that point where you didn't think about anybody else? You just thought that this would be kind of a, a next mission for you? Well, for me, the, one of the, one of the big reasons, you know, the symptoms of PTS and the symptoms of traumatic brain injury, 
have a lot of overlapping categories. So it would be hard to kind of tell which one was stronger than the other. Sure. But to your point of what you just said, none of that was going on with me. What was going on with me is, <clears throat> you know, I uh, had a lot that was going on in between my ears, a lot of noise, wasn't sleeping good. Uh, you know, I had a lot of things going on. And so I was trying all the tools in my tool belt, you know, I tried prayer, tried meditation, tried going to meetings, was going you know, doing all these different things that usually would, uh, you know, would, would help me. Sure. And, uh, and none of it worked. So in my mind, it was just a military decision-making process where hmm. it's like, okay, I know what bullets do to brains. And if I need my head to uh, calm down, then I'll just, you know, hey, this is a valid course of action. I'll wow. just utilize this pistol. And then the only thing that, that stopped that, you know, was grace of God, moment of clarity, whatever you want to call it. But I realized that, oh my God, like, I just thought that that was a, uh, that was a valid course of action. And, uh, and that's when I really realized that, man, I, I need some help. Tom Spooner here in the National Defense. Man, what, what a, we just so appreciate you sharing that, Tom, uh, and, and being so honest about what's going on, because it's happening to a lot of people, as you know, and for you yes. to come through that and then to make the decision to help other warriors, uh, you co-founded uh, an organization called Warrior's Heart, right? That's correct. And, and so what was that organization intended for? So whenever I got out of the military, I'll tell you just a brief backstory. When I got out of the military, I was because of my own experiences and because of the 22 veteran suicides a day, I was very passionate about uh, addressing the suicide issues or the suicide, you know, epidemic that, right. that's been going on for years. And, uh, so, you know, the, the main thing with this population with warriors, uh, when it comes to suicide, they just do it. Um, you know, it's not a cry for help. It's not a, right. uh, you know, the story usually sounds like, wow, I, I knew they weren't doing that great, but I never thought they would do that. Or it's like, well, I thought they were doing, you know what I mean? It's never, they just do it. So if mm -hmm. they just do it, how do you get in front of that? Yeah, you know? and, right, um, right. And, so for, for me and, and my own experience and what I've known about my community and all is that I wouldn't say all, but almost all of those suicides, there's some kind of uh, self-medication going on where there's alcohol, illicit drugs, or even uh a prescribed drug, right. you know, so, so whenever it comes to suicide prevention, you know, if, if we can't stop it when they're going to do it, it's like, how do we get ahead of it and, and how we get ahead of it at Warrior's Heart, you know, again, based on the facts that, hey, the initial struggle is usually with some kind of chemical dependency or self-medication to cover up the PTS and to cover up the trauma and uh, unresolved grief and moral injury and those kind of things. So that's why uh, we put all of our efforts into the prevention. I mean, a form of suicide prevention, which is addressing the self-medication aspect of it, you know, so if we address it there and, and, and address the things that are driving those thoughts, those beliefs, those feelings, uh, and providing them with tools you know, of, of how to live, uh, you know, with all of that going on, then we, the, then we don't get to the suicide piece. It makes perfect sense. So Warrior's Heart is, uh, is a very special thing. Um, it's, for me, it's, it's personally, it's very special because uh, it's the only place uh, that I've ever experienced where I can be 100% myself. Um, uh, I've been involved in recovery uh, since 1992. And I've also been a, a warrior since 1990. I can talk about recovery. I can talk about the effects of, of war on my family and on myself. But Warrior's Heart is the one place where that kind of healing uh, with the same like-minded people can occur. I knew the problems that I was having in my life. What I needed was solutions. I didn't need to keep talking about the problem. I didn't need to be told how screwed up I was. I knew. This is the National Defense.